It's time once again for everyone's favorite game, Who Should Win and Who Will Win, Oscars edition. The best edition. But this year, I think the real question is, will anybody watch the telecast? I'm guessing no, with no big audience favorites to root for after k Stu took Lady Gaga's spot. Shocking. Absolutely shocking, especially considering the BAFTAs and the SAG Awards felt it was the other way around, snubbing k Stu for Lady Gaga. This is a real slap in the face. This is a real, like, go home kind of snub. I think Lady Gaga should be seriously offended, quite frankly. Her hopes of being the new Cher seem dashed already. House of Gucci was totally shut out the day after Jared Leto earned a Razzie nomination, uh, although plenty of nominations in other places. You know, House of Gucci was doing okay until the Academy Awards just you know, brought down the hammer. It's, again, really shocking. It seems the Academy just couldn't overlook the film's many, many flaws for its one shining bright spot, Lady Gaga. I thought she was fantastic. I think she's definitely deserving of a nomination. Maybe people will tune in to see Lin-Manuel Miranda likely earn EGOT status, although with We Don't Talk About Bruno not submitted for Best Song and therefore not nominated, that sucks a lot of fun out of that as well. How great would it have been to have seen that perform live? Some trades are putting out the clickbait headline that No Way Home was snubbed for Best Picture. I'm glad a lot of people are bringing down the hammer on that, because come on! While No Way Home was a very fun ride, and therefore deservedly one of the most successful movies of all time, quality-wise, artistically, it's no it's not even an avatar, which was a huge step forward in many different tech, uh, te- um, you know, technological fronts for filmmaking. It's No The Dark Knight, Black Panther, and Mad Max Fury Road. Side note, side note though, I still think having Tom Holland, Andrew Garfield, nominee, what a year for Andrew Garfield, and uh, Tobey Maguire co-host is the way to go to acknowledge what No Way Home did for the movie business in 2021. And it's also the last chance that the Academy and ABC have at getting anyone to watch this thing on March 27th. Uh, ABC owned by Disney, which is a, like you know has 25% of No Way Home, I think maybe they could swing it. Thwip, 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 let's get these three guys in here. Uh, at least present one award or do the opening, but I really hope they host. I think that would just be perfect. Chef's kiss. The new Mad Max Fury Road is obviously Dune, also from Warner Brothers, which got the second most nominations overall with 10. Although Denis Villeneuve was surprisingly snubbed for director. Even George Miller was nominated for Mad Max Fury Road back in 2016. With that director snub especially, but I think it's just again like Mad Max Fury Road, Dune will win a lot of the craft and technical awards, but it doesn't have a shot at best picture. It's just nice that it was nominated. Uh, The film with the most nominations is The Power of the Dog, a huge win for Netflix in a big year for streaming overall as Apple's Coda has three nominations in major categories itself. Apple on the board. Woo! Churn that, baby. Uh, For those of you who haven't been following our discussions, Apple TV has the most amount of churn of any streaming service. But The Power of the Dog is not an audience favorite, creating another head-scratcher year where Hollywood celebrates a film that the rest of us just don't get. I think Don't Look Up is the far superior film from Netflix and just superior overall, and I'm hoping for an upset. Remember, a lot of nominations doesn't mean necessarily mean a lot of wins, and in some cases, and I think cases far more shocking than this would be, it sometimes means no wins. You can get a ton of nominations and absolutely no wins anyway. Uh, also, I have to say, you know, I know some of you, I, I still have mixed feelings about another straight actor playing an LGBT character and getting, you know, so, so many nominations for it. I try, I mean, The Power of the Dog just wasn't for me personally, and I know that a lot of people feel that way. And I'm curious in what camp that you're in. Are you like, it deserves all this? Or are you also, you know, I, I feel like it's another uh, shape of water, quite frankly. Uh, Finally, before we dive into the major nominations, this is another big year for international films with not just one, but two of them, two of them breaking out of the single designated category uh, where they are still both nominated. Japan's Drive My Car and Denmark's Flea are nominated in other major categories and are competitive in them, no less. Very exciting. Very exciting. I love to see uh, America finally become part of the global community, catching up with the rest of the world when it comes to enjoying entertainment. And Netflix is like, we did that too, to a degree. I mean, maybe Netflix made people get a little bit more used to that. All right, so anyway, 
Uh, let's do this. Best picture. So we're playing who win, who who should win and who will win. And of course, as always, be sure to, to play yourself down below. All right, best picture. Belfast, Coda, that's the Apple movie. Don't Look Up, another from Netflix. Drive My Car, the one of those uh, international films. Dune, King Richard. Licorice Pizza, Nightmare Alley, hooray! I think this is the Dark Knight nominee. Some people had said, oh, that should have gone to Spider-Man No Way Home. That's why we they expanded the best picture uh, number of nominees so that certain films wouldn't be left out. And you know, I, I think people are assuming the idea so that genre films can get in there. I don't think that's always the case. I'm very happy to see Nightmare Alley get that kind of a nod. Uh, it only has three other, not in any huge categories. Um, Del Toro shut out, no acting nominations, but it has uh, production design, costume design, and cinematography, where I think it's it's very worthy. It could give Dune a bit of a run for its money, maybe, in those categories. I'd, I mean, I like Dune, but I really like Nightmare Alley, so I'd love to see that. It's not going to win Best Picture, though. Uh, the Power of the Dog and West Side Story. I think... Who's gonna win? I think this is one year where it's really kind of up in the air. I think that Power of the Dog and West Side Story might be considered the front runners, but don't underestimate Coda and Drive My Car, and then also Don't Look Up. I would love to see Don't Look Up swoop in there and save the day. I also feel King Richard is deserving of a Best Picture win, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Uh, and I don't think it's, it would, be like, it would be like a Cinderella moment if it was Don't Look Up. It'd make me so happy. But I, I think that's the least likely of the, of the likely ones. All right. Uh, but it's really open. It's surprisingly open this year as to who could win. But, I mean, does that make it more exciting? Not really if you don't really care about any of the contenders. Uh, all right. So anyway, Best Actor, Javier Bardem for Being the Ricardos. Benedict Cumberbatch for The Power of the Dog. Andrew Garfield for Tick, Tick, Boom. I think that nomination is going to do wonders for his career. Uh, Will Smith for King Richard. And Denzel Washington for The Tragedy of Macbeth. Will Smith should win, will win. This is his. It's finally his time. The only thing I could potentially see happening is a Benedict Cumberbatch upset in the vein of Mickey Rourke losing out at the last minute to Sean Penn, another straight actor who played an LGBT character. And of course, many people pointed out that ended up not working out so well many years later. Uh, I'd love to see Javier Bardem be more of a contender here because I thought he was so wonderful as Desi Arnaz. And I loved that that movie shined a light on how crucial Desi Arnaz was to the success of uh, I Love Lucy in front of and behind the camera. Uh, but I think his win, the win there is that Javier Bardem is nominated. I don't think that he's going to win. It's Will Smith's. I do feel, I personally agree, it's Will Smith's time. King Richard was a perfect role for him, and he ate it up. It was incredible. All right, best actress. Jessica, some people think that Jessica Chastain took Lady Gaga's spot. Mm -mm, Kristen Stewart did. Jessica Chastain is nominated for The Eyes of Tammy Faye. And as you can see, that is quite the transformation. So I think The Eyes of Tammy Faye is pretty much a lock for makeup and hair over Cruella. You would think Cruella might be the winner, but I think Eyes of Tammy Faye is going to take that one. Uh, Olivia Coleman for The Lost Daughter. Every year, Olivia Coleman. Oh, Olivia Coleman's the new Meryl Streep. Uh, Penelope Cruz for Parallel Mothers, Nicole Kidman for Being the Ricardos, and then Kristen Stewart for Spencer taking Lady Gaga's spot. Again, such a slap in the face to Lady Gaga. She should be offended. She should be upset. I would be upset. That really sucks. Um, and I don't think as many people are going to tune in for Kristen Stewart as they would have for Lady Gaga. I mean, who's going to bring the red carpet galore? They might try and get Lady Gaga to present, but she should be like, F you. <laughs> All right, so anyway. I think Nicole Kidman should and will win. I think Nicole Kidman ended up doing a really wonderful job as Lucille Ball. She played a really important role, and I think that Lucille Ball uh, finding success in television as an older actress mimics what Nicole Kidman has done with her career. And it's fascinating that that was happening when Lucille Ball was in Hollywood, and it's still happening today with Nicole Kidman. So I, and that would be the, that's probably the only chance for being the Ricardos to win. And I think the Academy is going to want to give it something. As you know, the Academy tends to be pretty diplomatic and democratic with its, with its wins. So I think they're going to want being the Ricardos to be an Academy Award winning movie. And this is the space to do it. So there could be an upset. But I think it's going to be Nicole Kidman, and she deserves it. I didn't like her Lucy very much, but it's almost impossible to do a really good Lucy. But I think her Lucille Ball was sensational. And the more you watch the performance, the better it gets. All right, Best Supporting Actor, uh, Siren Hines for Belfast, Troy Kutzor for Coda, Jesse Plemons for The Power of the Dog. He and Kirsten Dunst, power couple, both nominated. They, they were friends before, but they fell in love acting together on the set of Fargo. I love it. They were so good in Fargo. Uh, J.K. Simmons, also for being the Ricardos. What? 
That's craziness. He was a horrible Fred. He did not see, come across as Fred at all. He was just playing J.K. Simmons, in my opinion, who I love, but I mean, I did not particularly care for it. And then Jody Smith McPhee for The Power of the Dog. You know, Hollywood has so often loved to anoint ingenues, you know, with the uh, with the with the Oscars. Uh, I think that maybe perhaps Cody Smith McPhee could be the male version of that. Uh, I think he likely will win this category, but I wouldn't underestimate Troy Kutzer for Coda. I think there's a strong chance that uh, Troy Kutzer could take it as well. And I think I'd be happy with either one. I don't have a I don't have a horse in this race. I think many of us. That's like the slogan for the Oscars this year. You don't have a horse in this race, so why would you watch it? <laughs> All right, but anyway, it's, hopefully it's a good show. Hopefully the the Spider Men are hosting. All right, Best Supporting Actress. Jessie Buckley for The Lost Daughter. I'm so happy to see Jessie Buckley get on the board here. She's a very good actress. She has not a, no chance of winning, I don't think, but you know the nomination itself puts her in a great category and will help her get more work. Ariana DeBose for West Side Story. No Rita Moreno. People thought Rita Moreno, might, who won for the original film, might get nominated again. She was a producer on it. She worked a lot to publicize it. No nomination. Uh, sometimes, yeah, the Academy, as you're seeing, can also be cruel. Uh, Judy Dench for Belfast over her co-star. That's very surprising, especially since Judy Dench has been nom- not only nominated many times before, but has already won an Oscar. Uh, Kirsten Dunst for The Power of the Dog. I love Kirsten Dunst. I mean, she was pretty good at the beginning of her career, but she has turned into a phenomenal actress. I'm so happy for her. She'll be back. She'll be back to win an Oscar someday. And Ingenue Ellis for King Richard. I hope that it's uh, Ellis. I think Ellis did a fantastic job. I think she's just as important. Uh, well, you know, it's supporting, but you know, she's very valuable to King Richard succeeding as a movie. And so I really would love to see her win. But I think that Ariana DeBose and Kirsten Dunst could also take it here. I would go with Ellis, but I could see any one of the three taking it. All right, next up, Best Director. No Villeneuve, no Del Toro. Now, at least Del Toro's already won, but for no Villeneuve? How can you have so many nominations for uh, Dune and not nominate the director? Oh, that's so bad. All right, so anyway, uh, Belfast, Kenneth Branagh, Drive My Car, uh, Ryusuke Hamaguchi is the uh, director there. Licorice Pizza, Paul Thomas Anderson. I feel that's a lazy, I'm like, oh, Paul Paul Thomas Anderson. Of course what he does has to be nominated. Power of the Dog, Jane Campion, the only woman to be nominated twice for Best Director. And then West Side Story, Steven Spielberg. I think this is also very open. I think anyone could take this. Probably Paul Thomas Anderson is the least likely, but anyone else of the four, I could see a win here. I could really see a win. Um, I would actually kind of like to be Hamaguchi. Hamaguchi's going to win an Oscar. He's going to either win here or in uh, adapted screenplays where you're about to see in the next category. So he's, I think Hamaguchi's going to get something. Uh, so just as, it, just, it depends on how the Academy decides to divide this stuff up. Like, is Belfast going to get anything? It could be here. I turned, I couldn't get through Belfast. I have to tell you, I turned off Belfast and Tick, Tick, Boom. Did, not my cup of tea. Not my cup of tea. But I respect those who enjoyed those movies. I thought West Side Story was incredibly well directed, but Steven Spielberg doesn't need another Oscar. I think um, the nomination in and of itself is a win. It was so well directed, they couldn't deny him the nomination, even though that meant shutting out Villeneuve. All right, adapted screenplay. Talk about another shutout for West Side Story. Tony Kushner, who I thought did an incredible job adapting that to, to, you know, modernizing it, but yet still retaining the magic of the original. The Academy didn't care. All right, Coda, Drive My Car, where Hamaguchi could be the winner here. Dune, and then The Lost Daughter, written by Maggie Gyllenhaal, who's not nominated for director, and then The Power of the Dog again, Jane Campion. Could this end up being a consolation prize for one of these women, even though they couldn't get a win in the directing category? I think you could see that. I think that's very possible, very possible. Whoever doesn't win director, you might see them be picking up a a consolation prize over in writing. You saw that with Adam McKay has had that happen to him, Jordan Peele, Taika Waititi. It's a way to give a a talent that the the, uh, Hollywood is excited about a win, even though they can't win in the directing category. Uh, and on that note, original screenplay, where Sorkin is shut out. You know, it would be his fifth nomination. He already has won. I think it's like f- shooting fish in a barrel at this point. They can't keep nominating him, especially since I don't think he necessarily pushes himself as a writer. We all know he's a great writer. I think Aaron Sorkin is going to have to really do something new that seems very different for him to get nominated in the future, unless it's like a weak year. Although this is a pretty weak year, and he didn't get nominated. All right, Belfast, Kenneth Branagh. Will he win here? 
to make up for maybe not winning in director. Don't look up for Adam McKay. He's like, I've already done this. I want a directing win and or not a nom. King Richard, I'm so happy to see King Richard here. Very well written film. Licorice Pizza, again, Paul Thomas Anderson. And then The Worst Person in the World, which is uh, Norway's uh, international uh, contender and nominated in that category as well. Um, I think that it's between Belfast, Don't Look Up, and King Richard. I mean, Adam McKay's already won, but Don't Look Up is so well written. Still, I could see this being Kenneth Branagh's consolation prize. I think it should be King Richard, because that's an incredibly well-written sports film. It's very, very well written. That should be the winner, but I don't think it's going to be. All right, then animated feature, where things get interesting. Encanto, Flea, Luca, The Mitchells vs. The Machines, uh, and then Raya and the Last Dragon. Disney, Friendly Fire, three of the five. But I also want to point out Mitchells vs. The Machines is a huge win, not just for Sony Animation, but Phil Lord and Chris Miller as producers, because of course they already were on the board, not only on the board with Spider-Man uh, Into the Spider-Verse, but they won that year. So they are starting to become a force in animation, which is exciting and deserved. Even though I didn't enjoy Mitchells vs. The Machines myself, story-wise, I still do respect it from an artistic perspective. But it's down in, to Encanto and Flea. But I think there's a real chance that Flea could take this. I think that this could be one of those years where Disney doesn't win through Pixar or Disney animation. I think, but I think it's down to those two. And we'll see. We'll see who uh, goes home with the gold. Then original score. Don't look up. Dune from Hans Zimmer. Encanto. Parallel Mothers. And then The Power of the Dog. I think, you know, Hans Zimmer, also no stranger to Oscar, but his Dune score is tremendous. And I think that Encanto, of course, is quite good. I think it's between those two, but we'll see who wins. This is pretty open as well. Then original song. We have Be Alive from King Richard, Beyonce's first Oscar nomination. She's going to be performing at the Oscars. Very cool. Then Dos Oruguitas from uh, Encanto, Lin-Manuel Miranda's, uh, that's what Disney decided to put forward. Uh, this would be his EGOT if he got this. He would have EGOT status, and I think he will. I think he's going to win, and I think he should win out of these uh, five songs. As you know, I really don't like songs being nominated that play over the end credits. If your song isn't in the actual movie, I don't... And or opening credits. I mean, I guess a James Bond song that's like so iconic, it kind of is okay. But I really need these songs to be in the movies. It really bothers me. Uh, Down to Joy from Belfast. Uh, didn't Jamie Dornan sing a song in there? That should have been the one. Uh, no Time to... I told you I turned it off. Uh, no Time to Die, Billie Eilish, which I actually thought was one of the worst Bond songs of all time, with all due respect to Billie Eilish. And then Somehow You Go, you Do, for, from the movie Four Good Days. It's Lin-Manuel Miranda. He's going to take it, I think, for sure. I mean, it, not only is it, I think, the best song in the group and actually is in the movie, but giving him EGOT status is, I think, just too tempting. And then finally, for what we're going to discuss here, there are other nominations, of course, uh, VFX, Dune. This is very frustrating because Legendary, had, Legendary and Warner Brothers had two movies to push this year for VFX, Dune and Godzilla vs. Kong. And I think it's ridiculous that Dune here is in here over Godzilla vs. Kong, which is basically an animated movie. So I think that's really just, that's just a, that's just a flippin' shame, man. All right, so Dune. Free Guy, that's a surprise. Uh, no Time to Die, uh, Shang-Chi, and Spider-Man No Way Home. Uh, that Spider-Man, that, the VFX on that were you know, pretty sloppy. Uh, you know, I, I saw some pretty funny memes about it. So I think it's surprising to see that here. And I think it's also surprising to see Free Guy, although Free Guy w did have very extensive and very cleverly executed VFX. Maybe that helped it. And of course, No Time to Die, I guess you're like, oh, I couldn't tell you used a lot of VFX. That's impressive. I have to say, I could see, I could, you know, this might, Dune might take it. I could see Free Guy. But, you know, I have to say personally, even though they were a little sloppy, I might go with Spider-Man No Way Home because they were just, they were so pervasive across the whole film. And again, I guess this took the animated movie spot because there are large swaths of the movie where it is mostly VFX. And they also did a really impressive job uh, de-aging some of the actors like Alfred Molina. They did a really nice job with that. So... You know, I guess I could see Spider-Man. I guess I would vote, for, and it would be nice for Spider-Man No Way Home to get something. So I would vote for Spider-Man No Way Home for this. But it's a real shame about Godzilla versus Kong. All right, so those are, that's my take on the 2022 Oscar nominations, who should win and who will win. I'm very excited to hear your own thoughts down below. And as always, I will be live tweeting the Oscars uh, on March 27th. So far away, it's ridiculous. All right. Uh, be sure to subscribe, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.